it is a big challenge and a great honor. It's not people playing the music, it's people breathing inside this music. It's so beautiful and so sacred. It's the drama of the man in front of death. It means really a lot for me because this music uh, touched me really deep. I love every single note of this piece. It's a masterpiece. The Church of San Marco in the heart of Milan. It was here that Giuseppe Verdi debuted his Requiem in 1874. And exactly 145 years later, Teodor Currensis is at the conductor's stand. He's directing his Musica Eterna orchestra and choir, comprised of 180 musicians and four vocal soloists. I think the very beginning of the Requiem, only with the celli whispering, Requiem eternum donais domi, et lux perpetua luce at his, all this, and the way he discovers this mysterious light comes. And like a whisper of the humanity from all the centuries comes, it's a Requiem. It's so magic. You need to get in a kind of spiritual wandering and a spiritual adventure of searching the place. And then at one point you fell in the same path that was the composer and then you have a lot of information to bring it here. Giuseppe Verdi is one of Italy's most famous composers. He wrote 28 operas and one funeral mass, the Messa da Requiem. Verdi composed the Requiem in honor of Italian poet and novelist Alessandro Manzoni. Precisely a year after his death, Verdi's Requiem had its premiere at the Church of San Marco. Everybody recognized even with some critics that said that it was an opera and not sacred music, but everybody recognized from, from, from the first very moment, from the first minute, that it was a major work of art, a masterpiece, moving everybody in a way that still uh, is uh, so effectiveness. Um, uh, so in all Europe, since the first performance in Milano, everybody wanted to get a performance of Messa da Requiem, and uh, it became one of the most important works by Verdi and 
sacred music pieces in, in, in general performed and beloved by, by the audiences. Composer gets this music in, uh, from a certain dimension and brings this music to our dimension. Of course, music is not the notes; is this, let's say, metaphysic emotion uh, that you can feel with your upper senses about something, and then you start to find a way to bring it down. Um, to transcript in language or sound what it is in another uh, unspeakable uh, and uh, undetermined place. Then, uh, of course, uh, the composer is not for me, this kind of creator that he creates from zero, this, he just gets in this environment and brings it here. Now the performer, what he has to do is to start from this environment here and go back to this sphere that the composer was, take the music and brought it here. Born in Athens and trained in St. Petersburg, Theodor Kurensis is one of the most exciting conductors of our time. From 2004 to 2010, he was music director of the Novosibirsk State Opera and Ballet Theater. It was there where he founded his Musica Eterna Ensemble and Chamber Choir. When he became artistic director of the Perm Opera and Ballet Theater in Western Russia, he took Musica Eterna along with him. Right from the start, Kurensis demonstrated his passion for getting people excited about music. So what I'm doing is all to prepare all this connection with the ensemble inside of listening to each other and understanding in every minute what is the function of the music. And then I try to bring this mysterious light in the, during the performance that everybody get, gets transformed. And these, all these functions and all this quality doesn't remain in the first layer of quality, but becomes a kind of sacred act between people.
when I met him, it was for me like a kind of artistic fusion because I, I immediately understood what he wanted. Maybe I cannot give it immediately to him, but I understood what he wanted and I totally approved what he was looking for. So the very special thing about his vision and of course the vision we are all together trying to bring with him to you um, is finding again the original score. And when I mean the original score is that we have to be aware that in Verdi's score there are some moments where it's written six pianos and then suddenly you have, I think, four or five fortissimo. So in an hour and a half of music, we have to find a way to do six piano and five fortissimo. And you need to, to hear these differences. This music takes a lot of efforts from every musician playing and singing it. Uh, and of course, the main challenge is to, to follow Theodore's uh, fluid vision of this music. Every time he changes d details, uh, he, he's like never satisfied with what he's doing. So. Uh, he captures the exact moment uh, of uh, the birth and life of the sound. And depending on how it goes, he can change really, like, really a lot. He could change really a lot uh, any time. to be trying to talk in the same language. So uh, considering that we are like nearly 200 people, uh, it's kind of a meditation to, uh, together. And, and this, uh, this is very hard to get, but when you get it, it's, it's really it's something very, very amazing.
I like the fact that in this piece you feel being a part of something great. And as a soloist, you have to, of course, there are some very exposed solo moments. And then suddenly you have to melt your voice in the, the trio, the quatuor, or the duet. And for example, the Agnus Dei is the, the most exposed moment because you are at the octave with the soprano. You sing exactly the same thing, but it has to sound like a unique voice. Theodor is an artist that is uh, trying to be connected all the time with what is constant in life, which is change. And, and this is uh, something that is very honest and very hard to follow. And very hard always for him to find the truth. Everything about him is special. And to work with him, of course, it's a great privilege and really deep satisfaction of, in, a, in a way of creating music together, uh, but also it's a great challenge because he's uh, obsessed with the quality. I think he's a genius, meaning that he is totally in the music. He's completely involved in what he's doing. And for me, the genius is this person who is what he explores, what he magnifies. I'm not, I'm surely not a genius, I'm surely not a perfectionist. Um, I just, I think, see a little bit different things in scores from other musicians. I'm a little bit individual, I would say. That's the only thing I can say about myself. And an absolute friend of, of composer that I decided to interpret it.
reckoning is a great it's a great form for doing something because you deal with something that you deal every day actually that is you deal with death and life and while you do requiem you are you you are called to um, answer to to two fundamental questions if you believe in life after death and if you believe in life before death Me domine de morte eterna, in dilla treme.